Hi everyone and welcome to our review on molecular bonding. What we're going to be doing in this summary video is going through a couple of the statements from the A-level specification. So we're going to be having a look at the concept of monomers and polymers and then we're also going to have a look at how important the condensation and hydrolysis reactions are in a range of biological molecules. This summary is just going to give us a bit of an introduction to what those reactions are and we'll see them come up time and again as we go further through the course. We'll also be having a look at some of these key features of those biological molecules we're going to look at, particularly with regards to what they are made from. First thing then is one of the concepts that you would have looked at in your GCSE, probably in chemistry, is what a monomer and what a polymer actually are. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the language because a lot of biology is about understanding the terminology. And if you can understand this terminology, then you can understand biology. If you don't learn all of these biological terms, things are going to go wrong very quickly when it comes to your exams because you can't just waffle your way through it like you might have been able to do to a certain extent at GCSE. At A level, you need to know these terms. You need to know what they mean. You need to be able to actually decode some of these words in unfamiliar context, potentially. So when we are talking about a monomer, if we have a look at that word monomer, then we can actually break it down into those two parts. So if you split it, Mono just means one, only or single, so it means an individual. And then mer, as that actual suffix there, that just means part. So if you put it together, it means one part. So wherever you see monomer, we're talking about a molecule that can be bonded to identical molecules and that will form a polymer. So monomer is a single part. The second word we need to know for this part is the word polymer. And again, you would have encountered this in your GCSE chemistry. Same thing that we did before. We can split that word down into the two parts. Poly means many, mer part. So many parts. Our polymer is a substance that's made from a large number of similar units that have been bonded together. One other phrase that I'm going to throw in at this point, just so that we can see that if we have this solid understanding of the actual structure of terms and words, you can use it to then decode potentially unfamiliar ones. Because we've also got this phrase here, which is a dimer. So if you split that word into its two parts, mer we know means part, and di, hopefully we know from other knowledge in our lives, means two. So anytime you saw that word dimer, you could actually ascertain that it means it's a substance made from just two units bonded together. So we've got that common theme running through these. They're all to do with some kind of a structure and that prefix, the bit at the start of the word, tells us how many of those units are joined together. Mono, one, di, two, poly, many. Now, as far as our biological molecules topic goes in the A-level biology course, then we're going to focus on three key biological molecules to start with. It's not all of them, but we're going to look at these three in a reasonable amount of detail in this early stage. And our three key biological molecules are proteins, carbohydrates and lipids, all three of which should already be familiar to you. We're not introducing anything new here just proteins, carbohydrates and lipids. In terms of one feature that all three of those biological molecules have in common is the actual composition. What all of those have in common is that they all contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. That's not to say that's all they contain, but proteins, carbohydrates and lipids all contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Because we're thinking at this point about polymers, then it is worth pointing out which ones of those biological molecules are polymers and which ones are not. This could be a lovely multiple choice question for one mark. And remember on these A-level papers, as in previous exams that you've done, 
every mark counts. That one mark could be the difference between you getting one grade and another. So first of all, proteins and carbohydrates are polymers. So proteins are going to be our polymers made from amino acids and our carbohydrates are going to be polymers made from our sugars, as we learned at GCSE. Lipids, however, are not polymers. So what you'll see here is a typical multiple choice question is they're going to give you the question which one of the following is not a polymer. You will have proteins, carbohydrates, lipids and another one I will introduce later on. And all you've got to do is make sure you pick out lipids every time. Very straightforward. So I think this is a handy little table for you to use. When it comes to your A-level studies, then my recommendation to all my classes is always start revising from day one, because you will be amazed at how much you're going to have to learn for this course. If you try to leave it and cram it at the end, it's not going to go well, folks. So start revision early and you can do this in a range of ways. This table here is a great one to just reproduce as a simple outline and then you can just try and fill it in yourself until you can get all nine of those boxes absolutely spot on. So what we have in our table, first of all, our first column is our molecule. Second column is the monomer that molecule is made from. And the third one is the polymer that those monomers will make when joined together. So if we look, first of all, we have our carbohydrates, which we just said is a polymer. We've already said that it contains carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And in fact, carbohydrates will only contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. That's it. Only those three elements. So the monomer, the individual unit that it's made from, are what we're going to term a monosaccharide. And when we do our carbohydrates, we'll understand this in a bit more detail. But break the word down. Mono means one saccharide sugar so a single sugar basically and a good example of this is our old friend glucose those monosaccharides can join together and if we have a number of those joined together we will make a polysaccharide many sugars and the example you should have encountered lower down the school is good old starch our second molecule proteins now proteins are made of carbon hydrogen and oxygen but they have two additional elements that can be present nitrogen first of all and that's going to be in all of those amino acids and then sulfur in some amino acids so all proteins are going to have carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen some will have sulfur but not all the monomers of our proteins are the amino acids hopefully you remember that from gcse and then when we join those amino acids together, we will make polypeptides, so many peptides, and we can make our proteins. The third molecule we need to know, the nucleic acids. Again, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, we've got those same three elements, but our nucleic acids also contain nitrogen and phosphorus. So make sure that you do know not only the names of the molecules, but also the elements we find in each of them. In terms of our monomer for our nucleic acids, they are the nucleotides and the polymers, two options here, DNA or RNA. What we're going to do in this last part of our little introduction, if you like, is we're going to have a look at a couple of key reactions that are going to be critical when you are answering an A-level biology paper. They're going to come up somewhere. We're going to have a look at the condensation reaction first of all. Now, condensation reactions occur when we've got two molecules and we're going to join them together by removing a molecule of water. So what we can see at the top here in this diagram is we've got our first molecule, which you can see has that OH group attached to it. And we've got molecule two again with the OH group attached there. Now, in order to join molecule one and molecule two together, what's going to happen is we are going to remove that molecule of water. So the OH from one molecule, the H from the other. That then gives us our H2O water. 
and that leaves us with the one oxygen. That one will then bond to the other molecule. So we've now joined molecule one and molecule two together, and we've actually formed a molecule of water alongside it. The reason it's called a condensation reaction is because we are forming that water. If you think about what we know condensation to be, it's probably encountered when you think about a hot shower. You get the condensation on the mirror or the windows. That's just because we're getting those little droplets of water then forming on a cooler surface. Condensation reaction, we're getting water formed as a result of the reaction. The other reaction is kind of the opposite we have a hydrolysis reaction. So hydro, meaning water, and lysis, splitting. So a hydrolysis reaction splits two molecules apart by adding water to it. So we can see here we've got our molecule one joined to molecule two. We're going to add the water to it. And as a result of that, we break the bond and then we're going to just attach OH onto molecule two and the hydrogen onto molecule one. So what we've done there is through adding water, we've split those two molecules apart. The last little bit of our summary for today, we're going to have a look at some of the types of bonding that we are going to encounter in this topic. Now, because we are an organism that lives on Earth, we are what's referred to as a carbon based life form. Now, the reason we are carbon based is because, as we've seen on our previous slides there, that carbon is one of those key elements in all these biological molecules that make us up. The reason that carbon is able to do this is that it's actually a really versatile element. And by that, I mean it can not only form bonds with itself, with other carbon atoms, but it can also form bonds with other elements. So what we find is carbon has a valency of four, which means it can actually bond to four other things, either other carbons or other atoms. So because of that, we can actually make it join to things in a whole variety of different ways. We can make a huge range of different structures with carbon as that kind of main feature at the core of it. And therefore, we can build a huge number of biological molecules with carbon at the heart of it. Hopefully you found this video useful, but don't forget if you're still a little bit uncertain on a couple of bits or you just want a little bit more practice, head on over to the A-Level website. The link for that is in the description box. And there you'll find the things like my lesson PowerPoint, the summary PowerPoint, some other little sort of checklists, some past exam questions around this topic, just other bits I think might be useful to help you in learning for your A-Level exams come the end of year 13. Don't forget, of course, to subscribe so you'll get the latest updates when I upload more videos to help you with your A-level biology.